Ladies and gentlemen, friends, neighbors, welcome to the 25th annual Brooklyn Park Mayor's Prayer Breakfast. I'm Pastor Landry Miazza from Discover Church here in Brooklyn Park, and it is my delight to welcome all of you. And I hope that the time we spend uh, together this morning will be a time of uh, fellowship, friendship, and most of all, a time of prayer and reflection. So um, we look forward to that. Uh, as we begin, I would like to invite uh, His Honor Mayor Jeff Lundy to uh, bring a greeting from the city. I just want to thank everyone for coming this morning. I, I thought I would tell you, you don't even know it, but you've been blessed. Uh, my voice is giving out, so my comments will be brief throughout the day. <laughs> I'd like to give the good news first. So uh, anyway, I just want to say thank you for coming. Uh, this is always a great experience and a great time. And it's made possible by the fact that people come. And uh, that's what makes it special is us coming together. Uh, so with that, I will uh, ask for the, color, the uh, presentation of the colors. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
As we remain standing, I'd like to invite Pastor Paul Uducesi to come forward for the opening invocation. Oh, that would have been very bad. <laughs> Can you imagine picking up myself from the floor? Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for this wondrous occasion to come together as a city, not only to uh, eat, but also to hear good things about what you're doing in our city. Father, we thank you for we call this place home. We call this place a place of work. We call this place a place of fellowship. And we call the place, this place a place where the meeting of the minds extend and further the benefits of our city. Father, we're asking for the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to be provided our uh, mayor, Mayor Jeff Lundley, and all those who serve under his charge. We pray, Father, that this place will continue to be a beacon of light to the cities round about. This city is filled with so many cultures. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will use the benefit of the cultures to, ex to further the city, to advance the city, to call the city a place of peace, and also, Lord of heaven, to cause the city to prosper. I'm asking that your name will be glorified through everything that is done in this city. That like a city on a hill that cannot be hid, this city will be one of those. I thank you for the blessing of everyone who has come here. And I thank you that we call this city blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you may be seated and the um, breakfast will be served. And uh, as we've already been blessed, we will continue to be blessed by the Maranatha Academy choir singing while we're enjoying our breakfast. Thank you.
I'd like to uh, uh, introduce Reverend Lisa Jacobson. She will be talking about our community focus for this year. Lisa? Thank you. Good morning. For those of you that know me, this is not my best hour of the day. <laughs> and when they told me as a committee member to be here at 6, 
when the rotary makes me get there at 7 and they know I always have wet hair, I knew we were in trouble. <clears throat> so I'm here today to share with you a little bit about youth homelessness. The organization that I lead um, works in collaboration with many others to serve young people from our community who find themselves without a place to lay their head at night. And we work as a collaboration with Brooklyn Avenues and many other organizations to meet the needs of those who are currently homeless. Brooklyn Avenues provides 12 shelter beds here in our community. At Hope for Youth, we provide a drop-in center when those shelter beds are filled, and they are every single day. Young people who are homeless are able to come to our drop-in center, take a hot shower, do their laundry, eat a hot meal, get the items they need, the, right now the warm coats, the hats, the mittens, clothing, but then also help. Because the way out of homelessness for them, after they're already homeless, is through employment, education, career pathways. Last year, 446 different youth from the North Metro suburbs walked through our doors 4,087 times. This problem is not going away on its own. You watch the news, there are many Adults who struggle with addiction and mental health issues, they had children. These are their children. And so Hope for Youth began to embark on a prevention program looking at the leading indicators of youth homelessness. Because these young people didn't wake up yesterday living a perfect life and suddenly become homeless today. And so as we looked at the leading indicators, we thought we have to get in there early. We met with law enforcement. We met with educators. I sat with school resource officers and asked them, tell me about a kid who was always on your mind when you left work because you knew you needed to do more, you wanted to do more, and you couldn't. What were their issues? I sat with teachers who cried. Their hearts are breaking for these kids. They're spending their own money to buy food for them. And so we are launching a pilot program here in Brooklyn Park in the coming weeks at Excel Academy, which is at 6510 Zane Avenue North. Those teachers are thrilled that we're coming in with a group of volunteer mentors that I'm still recruiting for, so if you're interested, talk to me after, where we are going to be there. And as those leading indicators surface, we are going to be the constant that travels along with them from first grade. This charter school goes through eighth grade. We're going to know them, and they're going to know us. And working in partnership with others in the community, we are going to have on site food for them, hygiene products for them, clothing, coats, hats, mittens, all of those things. And then we're also going to have other, other ways that their parents, as they struggle through things that are the leading indicators of them showing up at our door one day or Brooklyn Avenues, we're going to figure that out as well. We're going to provide the toolbox that the teachers don't now have. And so we wanted to share this with you and hopefully gain your support. There are envelopes on the table if you care to make a financial contribution to help this program get off the ground. We believe that this is the key to ending youth homelessness as we know it today by getting in the way of leading indicators in real time. Now I'm gonna take that hat off. And I will now do the prayer for our city. 
Jeremiah 29, verse 4 through 7. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. This is the day that the Lord had made. Let her rejoice and be glad in it. You know, like Lisa, I'm not a morning person as well. <laughs> However, thank you for inviting me to be here today. Uh, by the way, I'm uh, Reverend Henry Dolopet. I'm an associate pastor at Brooklyn United Methodist Church, a multicultural church. And we, uh, like you all, you know, constantly in remembrance of what Jesus Christ continues to do for us on this earth. Today I'll be praying prayer for our country and our world. Our scripture reading will be taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, 8 to 9. If you have your Bible, uh, you can turn me, okay. Okay, no problem. I don't have five. It's okay. I'll read. <laughs> okay, and so I read. Your Bible is your weapon. Take it with you all the time. Amen. Children of God. I read. And now, this word to all of you you should be like one big happy family full of sympathy toward each other, loving one another with tender hearts and humble minds. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't snap back at those who say unkind things about you. Instead, pray for God's help for them. For we are to be kind to others, and God will bless us for it. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, we say thank you. We say thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Father, we say thank you in the name of Jesus for sending your son who came to love us. We also thank you for this nation, this blessed nation. We say, Lord, thank you in the name of Jesus for constantly being our God, even in the midst of our sinfulness. Father, Lord, we commit this nation, Lord, especially in this time. The Father God will acknowledge, the Lord, that it's because of you this nation is blessed. And we say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come against the, 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 those trials, those tribulations, those evilness, those things that is not of you that continue to, to sometimes be divisive, O oh Lord. But we say in the name of Jesus that love will always win. We thank you for the world. The world around us, Lord. Those countries that suffer from war, Lord, we pray like your peace that surpasses our understanding will dwell in this nation. That Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you'll continue to raise up Jeremiah that will go around the world and bring peace. We say thank you in the name of Jesus for all that you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy your food. Listen. Thank you, Pastor Henry. Thank you for uh, Pastor Lisa for the words and the prayers. Um, how is the food, by the way? Is it good? 
Um, I know you're still eating and, and all that, but let's take a moment and thank the Marriott wait staff for their wonderful job. Now I would like to invite Pat Milton to come forward to introduce our speaker uh, for this morning. Introducing the introducer, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that and I, uh, 25 years ago, well it was, this is the 25th anniversary if you notice on the front of your program. At that time we had a park and rec director who would say, this is a great day in Brooklyn Park. And it is a great day in Brooklyn Park for so many reasons. Look around the room and all the smiling faces and this continuance of this prayer breakfast is, makes this beyond a great day in Brooklyn Park. I want you to know that one year ago, about a, a year and a month ago, I was reading a Guideposts magazine and uh, we were preparing for last year's prayer breakfast and uh, I read this article about, um, the title was, Miracle Man Who Went to Heaven and Came Back. And I was intrigued and I was inspired. And I wrote, I did something I've never done before. I wrote to this man who went to heaven and came back and asked, um, uh, he must have thought I was a lunatic. Um, he didn't know me yet, you know. <laughs> at least until he got to know me, anyway. Um, he did reply and say, yes, he would like to come and speak at our prayer breakfast after I told him our story and what we, what we were as a community and how we have thrived after 25 years because 25 years ago, we were in the national spotlight for horrific murders, commercial blight, dropping home values, and a brand new mayor known more for fighting than for prayer. I don't have to mention a name, do I? I was sitting in uh, church listening to the national, uh, the coordinator of national prayer breakfasts and leaned over to the person next to me and said, we need a prayer breakfast in Brooklyn Park. And that's when it began. And we started a prayer breakfast with our speaker, Adolph Coors. We figured the name Coors might get our mayor to cooperate and come and have a prayer breakfast with us. And it worked, he was here, he came in on the red eye. And he was here and he cooperated every year and God bless him, he helped establish that precedence um, for uh, a continuation of prayer breakfasts every year. And um, many of you were in that room. We had uh, Henningsen and Snoxville have been our faithful prayer breakfast sponsors ever since. Thank you. The Brooklyn Park Lions Club have been faithful sponsors every year since. The Brooklyn Park Rotary Club every year ever since. Many of our churches in the community have been loyal and faithful and dedicated uh, committee members and connected um, partners ever since, thankfully, obviously, because we are all still here. But I'd like to ask if you were at that prayer breakfast and heard Adolph Coors' message, would you stand? Let's, come on, I know, I see you, I know you were here. <laughs> Dave Kaiser, you were filming that first one, weren't you back there? <laughs> Thank you for your loyal, dedicated service all these years. Northwest Television has been with us from the beginning. We were gonna dig out some of those archives of those old films and I thought, no, I don't wanna see that one. No. Thank you very much for your willingness. But that's how it all began and we very much appreciate you. And all these years later, we now come together and through a lot of hard work, the city, the residents, businesses, the Ministerial Association, the Police Department, all proactive and now we are together in a city that continues to make national headlines. 
but we are now making national headlines for our positive connections, for a community that is culturally, positively connected and diverse in ways that no other city in the nation can praise or be proud of like ours does. And we have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be, I don't want to say prideful for, but it's not us. We know who's responsible for that. And I'd like to say that this prayer breakfast has just a little bit to do with that. Wouldn't you say so? Can we give ourselves a little credit for that? We also have a police department to be very thankful for, Chief. Thank you. We are... Uh, I don't know of any other police department that can claim the kind of positive connections that we have with police like our city does. And I think there's a lot of uh, connections with the police that we all have. We love our police department, and I don't know any other city that says, says that, and everybody I know says that. And they're here every year, and they're always in support. And I say the same about our fire department, and we don't hear the kinds of things that other cities have that we do in Brooklyn Park about the positive connections we have there. Um, and I think our prayer has a little tiny bit to do with that. So I'm just giving praise where praise is due, and I'm off my subject, but I think that the bottom line is that it truly takes a team. But I also have to give credit to the outrageous mayor that we currently have. <laughs> We have a current, an outrageous mayor who now gets national headlines for the innovative youth initiatives that he is leading the nation on. And I'd like to give him credit for that. And there's an old, song, or an old uh, phrase, we've come a long way, baby, and thank you for that, Mayor. We appreciate you. Um, it truly does take a team, but let us not forget who the leader of that team is, and we give him praise. And we're here to hear what the real story's about and how, whose voice we need to continue to listen to, and let's bring it back to the man who's going to help put us all back into the right perspective here. Daryl Perry, our speaker this morning, was a successful football player. Um, he blocked for Emmett Smith, and for, who you, for those of you who don't know football and don't know who Emmett Smith is, that was a really big deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I don't want to step on his parade, but uh, he was in Minnesota once, he told me last night. He worked with a guy named Lou Holtz, if you don't know who that is, that was a pretty big deal too. But even Lou Holtz, the great salesman that he was, couldn't get Daryl to come to Minnesota, so... He's a smart guy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Florida just beamed a little brighter for him. Um, but then um, he, uh, he became a, a motivational speaker and he maybe would tell you more, more about that and a family man, um, but then he died. And now he's gonna tell us what happened after he died. So I want you to welcome this man who is not dead. He's gonna stand up and talk to us. <laughs> Please welcome Daryl Perry. Wow. Well, um, could all the men stand up, please? Men. Okay, join me in honoring the woman with a hand clap. Men, if it weren't for those wonderful women, you and I wouldn't be here. So 
please always honor them. Have a seat. Now, now moving forward, 11 years ago, I died. And before I died, God told me I would die. He gave me, he told me that six months before I died, he told me. And then he said to me, you have to act normal and you cannot tell anyone. I said, what? <laughs> God, I said, God, what are you saying to me? That's impossible. I'm a talker. I love people. Come on. Are you really? God said, well, son, it's my way or the highway. <laughs> so go for it now. So all you all that are con concerned will waking up early. My start time in the morning starts at 4 a.m. The reason, the reason I would get out at 4 a.m., that is when I would have my time with God. Not so I can talk, so he can talk. And then I have to do what? Correct. So now, so I'm, I'm in my home office, and then I feel this hand on my back. I said, now, it's four in the morning. I know it's just me up. Who touched me? And then I heard the voice. The voice said, son. Relax, it's me, God. So I started looking around. And then the voice says, son, it's me, God, relax. I said, okay, I hear you now. So he began to lay out his plan, not my plan, his plan. And so, lo and behold, so guess what time I died? Correct. So now, Four in the morning, I die. And then, be, because of my obe obedience, God allowed for me to watch the whole thing. My spirit was in the air looking down. I said, okay, God, I see you. You are awesome. And then, can anyone tell me what angel 
Listen now. The angel God sent for me. Any, anyone. Wow. I heard that lady say Gabriel. Gabriel in the, the Bible is called the messenger. Right? So God sent Gabriel to get me. And all Gabriel said to me was, he did like this. So Gabriel took me around heaven for I was in the coma for three weeks, the number three, one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost, number three, right? So he take me around, and in heaven there is a a peace there that passes all understanding. So he takes me wrong. Heaven is a representative of, of this room. We have all colors, hell. Women, we have male. So, just know that when, when this war, war is over, God's greatest, greatest, uh, Just say, perfect for all of us is for us to be in, be in his presence. So we want to make the angels in heaven go like this. Give God praise. Because when one comes in to, to the love of Jesus, the angels are giving God praise. So is there anyone here today? that would, would like to join me because I'm going back now. Y'all can come, but I, me, that repair is going back. So if you want to go back, repeat these words after me. God and our Father, when, when, when this world is over, I want to be in your presence. I, would, I want to join you in the heavenly 24 hours party. And how do we seal this envelope? Amen. God bless you and thank you and thank you.
on one thing, and for the committee. You all have been the best, the best, for, the best accommodators to me and my older. But, but, hey, don't take this now. My older and favorite. Sister. <laughs> I hope you you all have endured during my time, and I want to come back. And hopefully, I will, hopefully, I will, maybe bring Mr. Course. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is fun. I'm coming. Thank you. We, ha do we have a little bit of time. Do you want to ask him some questions? Does anybody have questions you want to ask? Talk a little more? Come on. Come on. Becca. About coming back. So now when I was, when God said to me, now, son, you have to go back. I said to God, I said, God, nope. <laughs> I said, God, no, come on. Let's, let's keep, keep it real. You tell me, you want me to go back down there? I said, no way. And then God has a, a sense of humor. So he pulled back the veil and allowed for me to, to peek down on heaven. And then he showed me my family. Because I didn't want to leave Earth. And I, once I got to heaven, I, I didn't want to leave heaven. But because God said, go. I said, okay, God, um, I am obedient to you, so I'll go. And then God said to me, he said, son, go back. Because my people do not believe in me anymore. And so that's why I'm here. 
I'm, I'm here because God used me to show the world he is still God. Okay, next question. Oh, oh, my man's? No. No. Because he wasn't going to let you live there. Right. Not yet. <coughs> Not yet. Because of the reason now, I told you earlier, earlier God, God has sent the, the angel, Gabriel, to, to take me on a tour because it wasn't until I, I got to heaven I realized I was not going to stay in heaven. And so now I get to heaven, I do not want to leave heaven. Now think about that. On my own earth, I ain't want to leave. I'm in heaven, I ain't want to leave. Well, well, what, what, what do I do? Listen to God. And God said, son, go back. And then I said, okay, God, I get it. On, on my way, I'll go back. So, um, now, you all have to ask me another question. And, the, and then I uh, take my seat. In I have three kids, 21, 19, and just this past week, my youngest turned Fifteen. So now the fifteen year old is fifteen, but she has the mindset of the twenty one year old. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now you know. <laughs> a, a one, to answer the master's question. They can't hear in the back, so repeat the question. What school does your kids go to, your oldest? Oh, there's only one school in, 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 in America. <laughs> 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 oh, my kids go to the the famous uni University of Florida. Wow. 
Here's my last quote. God is a kid. <laughs> hey, I have proof. You ready? Uh, this is a question, and you all have to answer me. Okay, here we go. What color is the sun? Yellow. No, not. <laughs> Orange. Yeah. <laughs> what color is the sky? Decide orange, decide blue. You ready? Thank you very much, Mr. Perry. We're very delighted and blessed. Oh, if you want to know more um, about Mr. Perry, you could Google Daryl Perry football, and uh, you will have all the information that you need to know about him and what had happened and so forth. Uh, we have a little bit of time, which is unusual. Uh, so I want to... Um, uh, point your attention to uh, CCX TV has graciously um, posted on the back of the uh, bulletin the times uh, and the dates uh, upon which the, this prayer breakfast will air. And so um, feel free to watch it again or tell friends and neighbors uh, as to when to watch this uh, episode on TV. Uh, <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to invite uh, His Honorable Mayor Jeff Lundy for a closing remark. So wasn't that really good news? You found out that I don't have a voice and won't use up the rest of the time. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everyone for coming this morning. Um, I know I saw him, uh, Mayor-elect Mike Elliott. Where are you? So, <laughs> I just wanted to congratulate him, uh, our new neighbor, uh, our new mayor that we look forward to working with. Uh, Brooklyn Center and Brooklyn Park, we talk about youth. We do so much with your city and uh, we can't wait to start working with you. Uh, I'm not asking you up here to speak because you would fill 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to many a Liberian politician speeches. They don't end shortly. <laughs> so I, I just want to thank everyone. I would uh, like to just say a couple things. One is, you know, this uh, last year we talked about this country being in crisis on how much we can hate each other. Uh, we seem to be very good at it. And I want to ask everybody, do you feel like the election made everyone feel better? Did you notice that nothing changed? And so I would just propose that elections never solve anything, that what gets solved are when people get together and they talk and they work things out. It doesn't happen on election day, it never will. Um, and so I just ask that people think about that, that nothing's ever gonna get solved by what politicians do. It's gonna get solved by people, people of faith, whatever your faith may be, getting together and talking and figuring out the right thing to do. So um, at this time, I would like to thank, ask if the kind of the Brooklyn Park uh, Mayor's Prayer Breakfast Board, volunteers, I, uh, the committee, if you would stand please. Yeah.
You, you can be seated. That's, so, I, I just want to thank them for all their work. They meet every week. Uh, they do plan it out. They put all this together, and their reward is next month they'll start talking. That might be January. Take a month off and start thinking about next year. And so that's been going on for 25 years, and that shows commitment. And uh, you know, in kind of recognition of this being the 25th anniversary, we thought it would be good to recognize the person who's been there all along, um, which is strange, because my math would say she started working here when she was 14, because this is the 25th year, so I'd like to ask uh, Pat Milton to come forward. So we have a plaque uh, to present to Pat, and I'll read it. It's Faithful Servant Award presented to Pat Milton in recognition and appreciation of 25 years of faithful service at Brooklyn Park Mayor's Prayer Breakfast, November 16, 2018, celebrating God's power in our community. Thank you. Thank you. This isn't about me, and yeah, we did have a couple of years there where we faltered, and Mayor Grace Arbogast hauled us all back together and got us all back in line. So we did have a couple of years there where we fell apart and got back together, so it wasn't consistent, and that's why the numbers don't add up, but don't you talk about how many it adds up for me. I'm not even going there. <laughs> But thank you very much, and it's not me, it's a team, and we appreciate all of the team members and all of you who have financially kept us all together. So um, it's a break-even situation every year. We don't profit from this. Uh, we, whatever we gather in money that comes from your meals gets donated to, either used for the next year or donated to an organization. and. Um, this year we would like to donate to a foundation that um, the um, Perry family benefits from. They've not asked for an honorarium, so they've asked that we have, a, have any money that would, would normally go to an honorarium be used for uh, a foundation that their family supports. So um, we thank you for that, that your generosity will allow for that. So thank you all. We appreciate you and we look forward to next year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Pat, thank you, and uh, we pray that you will be around for the next 25 years in planning for this breakfast. Uh, <clears throat> we've come to the end of our uh, time together. I invite you to stand as we will resoundingly sing together. God bless America, and we'll do it Acapulco style, acapella. Please join me. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Now, dear friends, families, neighbors, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And together we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you all real good. God bless you. Don't forget to fill out the envelopes and the response card on the table.